Hello viewers and welcome to another episode of Elections by Numbers. Today we are talking about the Garden State, New Jersey. New Jersey is the most densely populated state in the whole country with uh, uh, about 1,000 people living per square mile. It also hosted the first baseball game in Hoboken and built the first drive-in movie theater in the town of Camden. New Jersey is pretty famous uh, for Atlantic City with all of its casinos and resorts. And actually the uh, board game Monopoly takes all of its property names from streets in Atlantic City. Also interestingly enough, uh, New Jersey hosts two NFL teams, uh, but neither team represents the state in their name, the New York Giants and the New York Jets. Because New Jersey is so densely populated, the state has managed to fit 12 congressional districts in a relatively tight space. The current balance of power in the state is uh, 10 Democrats to two Republicans. During the previous uh, Congress, the balance of power was seven Democrats to five Republicans. In 2018, though, Democrats managed to flip four seats, which should leave you wondering, okay, so why don't they now have 11 seats uh, instead of just 10? The reason for that is because of a man named Jeff Van Drew, seen here, who represents uh, New Jersey's second district. Van Drew was elected as a Democrat in 2018, but uh, one year later, I believe uh, in December of 2019, he flipped to the Republican Party, uh, giving them one more seat. Jeff Van Drew's district, uh, that second district, is one of five districts that I consider to be competitive this November. And those are districts uh, two, three, five, seven, and 11. I'm gonna go ahead and just list all of those up here in my window and uh, also put next to them their partisan lean according to the Cook Political Report's Partisan Voting Index. And as you will see, they all lean very, very slightly to the right uh, when compared to the national average. However, as you'll also see, uh, four of those five are currently represented by Democrats. Prior to this past December, all five of them were, but of course, Jeff Van Drew uh, switched parties recently. To quickly summarize uh, how things went in New Jersey in 2018, uh, the state being very urban and suburban took a very hard left turn during the midterms. We saw a mass exodus away from the Republican Party with uh, four seats flipping. And that mass exodus is uh, very neatly illustrated in my uh, uh, raw house turnout graph, which I'm gonna show you right now. So as you can see, the state of New Jersey uh, has ups and downs that clearly coincide with uh, presidential election years versus midterm election years. What's extraordinary about this graph though is how <laughs> from 2016 to 2018, Democrats actually increased their raw house turnout numbers, which is the reason why they were able to flip four of their 12 seats. Republicans also turned out in pretty good numbers. Uh, their, their, their midterm numbers in 2018 uh, were an improvement on uh, 2014 and, and 2010, but they just could not compete that year. I mean, enthusiasm was just generally through the roof. Suburban and urban voters uh, just, just broke heavily for Democrats during the midterms, as you can see, which is why their slope value is so much better uh, than the Republican slope value in this graph. Okay, let's toss that graph aside. I'll give you my consensus on uh, New Jersey's House elections this year. We're going to see one flip and yeah, it's gonna be that second district. Jeff Van Drew, uh, the newly christened Republican, I believe is going to lose his reelection bid. I mean, the numbers are seem crystal clear to me anyway that Democrats are just chomping at the bit to get more Democrats in the House and possibly to oust this president, but we'll get into that in a later section. I do think that uh, Van Drew's constituents are going to punish him this year as he renounced the party that he was uh, initially elected as being a part of, and he has vocalized his support uh, for President Trump uh, in the days since then. So I predict uh, New Jersey's second flipping uh, from Republican to Democrat uh, for a net gain of one for Democrats. Let's make that official and put it on our first map. Mark it. Up next, we have a Senate election in New Jersey. Senator Cory Booker is running uh, for his second full term uh, this November. Booker is, of course, uh, more well-known nationwide for his presidential bid, which ended in uh, th th this past January, I believe. But because of New Jersey election laws, he was able to run uh, for president while still maintaining his uh, candidacy for Senate. So he's focused all of his energy on keeping his seat since he uh, dropped his presidential bid. He is running against an undetermined uh, Republican opponent as of this video. To figure out if New Jersey voters are likely to reelect him, uh, let's pull up some uh, voter turnout ratios. Let's look at those right now. So here we have some numbers that are uh, pretty revealing, actually. The last time Booker ran 
uh, was in 2014, of course, and he received uh, just over 14% more votes than the total of all 12 uh, uh, Democrats running for House seats that year. Whereas his Republican opponent received 10% fewer votes than all the Republican candidates running for House that year. So what explains the dip in enthusiasm in 2018 for Democrats and that surge for Republicans? Well, it's basically the candidate, Bob Menendez, the uh, senior United States Senator uh, from New Jersey, who was also a Democrat. It came out prior to his election that year that uh, he was being investigated for corruption, allegations of corruption. Basically, Menendez was accepting gifts from donors in exchange for, uh, I guess, promotion or sort of advocating for business interests uh, in exchange for uh, a gift that it was seen as less than ethical. So that damaged Menendez's uh, reputation and approval rating in the state, which is why fewer Democrats than normal turned out for him two years ago. In spite of that disadvantage, though, he still won re-election just because there are more uh, Democrats voting in the state than Republicans in general. So let's toss those numbers aside. Uh, we just have to wonder if uh, the waning enthusiasm for Menendez is going to impact Booker in any way. Let's also consider Cory Booker's approval rating in the state. As of this video, it is plus nine points, which can only help him this year. So let's take what we know about raw house turnout, about his approval rating, and about the uh, questionable downturn in that slope value for uh, voter enthusiasm uh, for senators and calculate whether or not we think Booker is going to win his second full term. Hold on. And there we have our senatorial result, Cory Booker winning by a 12.9% vote margin. This number would be higher if Menendez's performance in 2018 was better than it was. Quite honestly, I think 12.9 is, is sort of the low point of how well Booker will perform. I, I'm not questioning the fact that he'll win this seat again. I'm just saying that this less than stellar result of a 12.9% victory as opposed to a much higher margin of victory might just be due to outside factors outside of Booker's control. Regardless, we have him winning this year. Again, let's make that official and put it on our senatorial map. Mark it. And now it is time to talk about the presidential election of 2020, starring President Donald Trump and Democratic challenger Joe Biden. New Jersey is a state that last voted for a Republican presidential candidate in 1988 when they uh, broke for George H.W. Bush over challenger Michael Dukakis. To understand more about how New Jersey voters uh, elect their president, let's take a look at some more uh, voter turnout ratios. Let's bring those up right now. So here we're looking at actually uh, <laughs> some of the steadiest uh, presidential to House vote ratios that I've seen so far. From President Obama's re-election in 2012 uh, to Donald Trump's election in 2016, the change in these ratios for, for both parties is less than 1%. When I graph these later for you, you're going to see slopes of nearly zero for both parties. Just two flat lines, one on top of the other, the blue on top of the red. So basically, uh, numbers aside, uh, New Jersey voters are pretty predictable in how they vote for presidents. This all depends, of course, on how they turn out for House candidates, which, as we covered in an earlier section, will favor Democrats this year, more than likely. We also have to consider in my calculations the approval rating of the incumbent, in this case, Donald Trump. And as of this video, his approval rating is at minus 31 points in the state. As if that figure wasn't already illustrated by the flip from 2016 to 2018 in the House, we have confirmation now that this state generally does not like this president. So let's take all those figures, push them together, and figure whether or not Donald Trump is going to win New Jersey this year, or Joe Biden. Let's calculate that right now. Polbot. And Polbot's telling me now that uh, Joe Biden is going to trounce Donald Trump in the state of New Jersey by a just over 25% margin of the vote. I never considered uh, New Jersey to be competitive at the presidential level before this video, and I certainly don't now that we've crunched the numbers. So let's make this result official now. Let's put it on our presidential map. Mark it. So now that all the results are in, let's talk briefly about the future of New Jersey's politics. Let's bring up an old line graph and two new ones and get into this. So here, uh, looking again briefly at the raw House turnout for the state of New Jersey, I just want to point out those slope values to you. We can already see that Democrats outperformed uh, Republicans significantly in 2018, but divert your attention to that, uh, that value preceding the value X in both of the equations that you can see. That value of 169.2 
uh, labeling the blue line is telling us that on average, every two years, Democrats have increased their voter turnout by 169,200 votes. Republicans are also increasing their turnout. They have a value of 40, meaning that every two years they're adding an average of 40,000 voters. But that value of 40,000 is still less than a quarter of the amount that Democrats are adding onto their rolls. So enthusiasm is up in the state in general, but it is heavily skewed to the left. Next, if we divert our attention uh, to these other two line graphs, these are estimates for the rate of increase or decrease in those uh, voter ratios that I was using in my previous calculations. As I mentioned before, Bob Menendez, the other senator from New Jersey, really kind of took a hit in enthusiasm during 2018, which I think is what accounts for this uh, decreased voter turnout ratio for Democrats in the Senate and voters sitting on the fence generally breaking to the right because they don't want a corrupt politician representing them, which I totally get. Again, I'm not sure if this is going to affect Cory Booker's chances this year. If it does, it will be in a pretty minimal way just because Democrats have an institutional advantage in that they have just more Democrats showing up in general for House elections. And then if we look at the presidential to House vote ratios, uh, I told you earlier you were going to see two flat lines and there they are. Both parties vote for presidents uh, in higher numbers than they do for the total of House candidates, as we can see, but it's more stark for Democrats. This is likely to give Biden an edge over Trump as if he needed one at all. Okay, let's toss those graphs aside. I'll give you my final consensus on the state of New Jersey. It is a left-leaning state and it is, yes, becoming more Democrat by the day. If you've absorbed nothing else from this video, just, just remember that turnout graph for House candidates that I showed you at the beginning of the video and then again just now. It's showing a huge break in the direction of Democrats, mostly because of urban and suburban backlash against this presidency. You can absolutely bet on that enthusiasm for Democrats continuing into this November. Because I've predicted that Democrats are going to ultimately win 11 seats and Republicans are going to win one this November, I could potentially see um, some of those seats breaking back for Republicans in 2022. This of course depends on who wins the presidency this year. If it is Biden and Biden's performance is average to subpar, New Jersey voters may view electing more Republicans in the House as a sort of backlash against him. So potentially some seats could flip back to Republican in uh, two and a half years, but I do not see it happening this November. And that just about does it for our latest episode of Elections by Numbers. I want to thank you, the viewer, for tuning in today. If you like what you saw, please hit the subscribe button to get updates on new content as it becomes available. I upload videos every Monday and Thursday. I'm also on Twitter and I update that account with which state I will be covering next ahead of the scheduled release date. So if you want to stay ahead of the curve, please give me a follow on Twitter and that link is in the description. Thanks again for watching and thank you for voting. See you next time.